everybody. I've got a 60 minute session I'm doing for a client. So I'm going to go ahead and read the goals here and get started. All right. I'm open to the most important message and clearing today with my goal of reconnecting to the great ocean of peace and serenity my soul holds. I choose and ask for assistance in clearing all the pressure blocks and baggage, preventing me from fully aligning with the full power of love, allowing ease and grace into my life. <laughs> so poetic, so poetic and beautiful. All right. The most important message and clearing today. Reconnecting with the great ocean of peace and serenity. My soul holds, clearing all the pressure, blocks, and baggage. Wow. All right. I'm so ready for this. <laughs> okay, I'm going to relax here. It's kind of, uh, it's almost like the wind is blowing sand, but it's not sand. It's more like very small bits of gravel and sand. So it makes it kind of dirty. The wind is blowing dirty sort of gravel sand. Which then can get into your eyes. And even when you try to shield it and even close your eyes, it still kind of seeps in the cracks. It's all gray. The scene is gray. And it's hard to say where this dirt is coming from. I mean, it's not like soil. It's like small bits of hardened rock and sand. Lots of it. I'm going to have to really pay attention here. Which means I have to become very silent in your energy field to hear the meaning of all of this. You could say it has something to do with direction. And because in this space, I feel like it's an endless gray space. Where is the wind blowing from? Where's this stuff coming from? It feels like any direction I take, it's the wind is blowing into my face. And I don't want this anymore. I don't want this. It's frustrating. I want... Can you imagine just having a nice peaceful walk day after day after day after day after day and the breeze just keeps blowing annoying like random sand and rocks like tiny little pebbles and bits of it into your face and you're just simply trying to have a peaceful walk and you're working on acceptance and It's almost like it's just the way that it is. It's just the way that it happens to be. I can't get it to stop, so I'm going to work with it. I'm going to accept it. I don't have power over the wind and where the sand and rock are coming from. This is just part of my routine. It's just part of the way things are, so I have to work with it. Because getting frustrated about it, getting pissed off, it's not solving the problem. However, it is irritating. And if you were to stand in here, it's like forever and ever and ever and ever and ever in a grayish type color 
with this blowing and you can even hear kind of the sound of it kind of moving across what could be ground. It doesn't necessarily feel empty here. There's some elements of illusion that you would have to outsmart. So I'm altering the framework of this energetic scene, which is tuned into your energetic balance, okay? And it's almost like you've been trapped inside a very small box and that box could be infinite and gray like this forever, okay? But if it is a small box, there's boundaries. There's something beyond this, right? If we could find the outer rims of it, the shape of it, the structure of it, it we could break it down or we could, um, we could ascend beyond it. We could move on from it. There's also this challenge of I can't fathom, I can't attune my energy to what is beyond this. So I kind of, I don't know how to travel beyond the frequency of what this space is. So I have to work with all that I know. Because I can't work with something I don't know because I don't know it. To get out of this, I have to work with an energy that I don't know, that I'm unfamiliar with. That means that I can't get out of this. I say it's really dry. When the, when the wind is blowing dirt like this, it's really dry. I'm showing you multiple things. What you could define as the boundaries of this energetic experience. Which your energy field, walking into your energy field, this is the first thing that I'm introduced to about you. Can you imagine how awesome you're going to feel when we transform this energy? <laughs> so I'm showing you what is the, the borders, the boundaries of this. I'm also showing you that you have more power than you're giving yourself credit for. Let's say that there's this element of wind blowing this breeze. Well, we can allow that to happen, right? Or you could get some sunglasses. You could create some structure that kind of goes around you. Or you could make it rain. <laughs> I mean, you have a lot of control. If we were to parallel it with a human world, you might come up with something practical in order to keep the sand and dirt out. But in the energy world, we could work with something practical or we could work with something extraordinary. We could build a wall. We could build a forest. We can create rain clouds. We can transform this into an ocean. We can do anything we want to do. We could be the sand and the dirt as well. We could blow on the wind if we want to. Creativity. We can work with ideas. And these ideas then give us access to new frequencies, new approaches. When we start tuning into a new idea and we say, you know what, I'm going to work with this idea. I'm actually going to see where this idea takes me. It's like buying a new car and then hitting the open road and not looking at your GPS, just turning this way, turn that way, and just see where you end up, okay? As a human, you can come up with an idea, something you want to try out. Now, you got to stick with it. you got to learn, learn from this idea more about yourself, more about how this idea um, challenges your life or improves it, or both. And what kind of roadblocks does it reveal to you? It's, it's introducing you to new threads and new energies. And it's reshaping, reforming, um, giving you access to something beyond the old pattern. 
it's interesting because as human beings, we kind of, um, we want a really good idea and we want it all to happen all at once. And we don't want to have to, it's like, okay, I just want to win the lottery and then everything's great. <laughs> But what about an idea that we actually have to kind of feed it and bathe it and buy it some new clothes and then 18 years later, <laughs> you know, but these, it could be a child, it could be um, an idea, it's something that you work with, something that you grow, a hobby that becomes a business, who knows, you know? We want the short term with all the benefits, but what about the long term? Because there's so many benefits in the long term, too, and how it molds and shapes you as a person. We want, we want the easy life, right? We all go for it. Your energy field doesn't necessarily say that's your style, that you need the easy life. Um, but I'm supposed to talk about this, okay? <laughs> you, would, you would be open to the long haul. Because you're okay with life. You're okay with life. I mean, the fact that there's no frustration when the sand blows, there's no anger about it, there's trying to work with it, trying to be an acceptance of it, that says something about you. I mean, when I'm walking in your energy field and it's like this, um, I mean, it could be, you could be having all kinds of emotional reactions to this. This could feel like eternity. This could feel like torture. This could feel like all kinds. But it actually feels just like the way it is. It just happens to be like this. But it's time, it's a divine time for it to not be like this anymore. And in that divine time, there's you choosing to do things differently. And doing things differently is accessing new frequencies that take you on a pathway you haven't yet traveled, which takes you out of the boundaries of this experience, okay? Giving you access to something new. And it can feel like a life event that you get to experience for the rest of your life. And that isn't a bad thing. I mean, if let's see, um, gray world for all eternity with sand blowing in my face, or other thing. <laughs> is the grass greener on the other side? I don't know. <laughs> All depends on how you want to look at it, right? But um, but this is what your energy field is like. It's like this. But there is there is an interesting message here about you're going to be working with new energies. It's gonna work. It's gonna work with some creativity. It doesn't necessarily say I'm I'm creative or I want to be creative. But there is something creative that is manifesting here for you. Because I can read the divine time, and the divine time says this isn't going to continue. <laughs> so that means change. Which means discovering yourself in new ways. Which means the, a new approach to the rest of your life. <laughs> means all of those things. Okay. Alright, you're such a good listener. You're hearing me out about all this. And the idea of moving on from something you've become adjusted to, it actually is like um, you, your heart kind of, yeah, it wasn't great. It wasn't the most amazing life experience, but I kind of developed a relationship with that life experience and the way that life experience was. It became predictable. It became... Um, consistent. It became something I was used to. And now to explore something that's outside of what I'm used to, I'm going to have to develop a new relationship with that. I was like, yeah. So you can bring with you everything that you learned from the that space, sand blowing in your eyes space that you became accustomed to, is what's molded and shaped you into who you are right now. So you're bringing all of that wisdom with you into every new experience that you have. So it's not like you ever leave it. You take all the learning with you. And then that learning becomes a tool to help you get through the next experiences. So you could walk through the desert forever, but eventually you're going to run into an ocean or a jungle or a city or something. So everything you learned walking through the desert, now you get to take that you and all those experiences and work with them as tools to get you through the ocean or the city or the jungle. Hmm. Wow. 
This is a very intriguing energy attachment. I am slowly working you out of this and you aren't wanting to let go. Not what I expected. <laughs> I personally would be cool with it. <laughs> Sayonara sand in my face. I'm cool with it. <laughs> but that says so much about you that you kind of grew... Um, there's some predictability, there's something comforting, like, to know what each and every day is all about. I mean, there's, there's something actually that feels warm, like it was your family, like it was, wasn't perfect, but you know what, I was okay with it, kind of like that. And you're attached to that, which means that you aren't open to a limitless, like, life experience. You want it to be defined by elements that then work together to create something that feels consistent in a way, which then is attachment, attachment to wanting life that has some consistency, even if it's not perfect, you're okay with it. But that's limiting yourself. That's putting you inside of a box now. And then erasing the barriers. And then now it's a gray place with sand blowing in your eyes. But you can get used to it, right? <laughs> I'm enjoying this so much, by the way. <laughs> what I love about it most is the fact that um, I personally... My relationship with what, you, w with the amazing way that you can work with a challenging flow, I would, <laughs> my, my relationship would be so different. So experiencing you um, is really awesome for me, okay? And just the, there's something about uh, the simplicity and the acceptance and the working through it and then being okay with it, but also the warmth and connection of what you've grown accustomed to. Um, it's a certain type of love. It's really beautiful. It's humble as well. It's humble. But it's also not a m mirrored reflection of your, your of your totality. Let's put it that way. Your totality is everything. It's not just one thing that shapes you. It's everything that shapes you. You're too into this. It's time to be into more of your infinite self. Infinite expression. This is very good. You're such a good listener because you're, um, you're hearing me. And you're not uh, speaking out of turn. You're not interrupting me. You're not. <laughs> you're so well mannered. <laughs> it's cool. There's something that I'm bringing out from within yourself. Something that's very special about you. It's just sort of expanding you. And that doesn't even come close to defining all the frequencies involved here. It looks like a white glow from deep down inside that's um, expanding and becoming more present in our present moment. And more saturated. You're becoming more a reflection of that energy, which is true to your sum pattern of your soul expression that is also very reflective of what we've been seeing here with the sand space. It's something about a master within energy. It's almost like you needed that sand space that, I mean, it's not like it's a desert by any means. It's just like, where is this dirt being picked up from? Somewhere. <laughs> it just keeps blowing around. But there's something about an activation through that energetic flow that is encouraging a master within to become more prevalent at the surface. 
and to take that master within that's now at the surface with you into new experiences. It's, it's big. It's a big deal. They show me what is one person that experiences the strength to accept and go with the flow of something that could be like sand blowing in your face every day. Then that person, let's just say 20 years or 30 years of their life, now transitions into an experience where there's no sand blowing in the face anymore. How do you think that person is going to value life? when when that burden is taken away you can use your eyes now to see and really feel the gratitude of where you've been and where you are now and to sit in the now as a master it's a big deal there is definitely something that you've mastered that you've been working on in lives and mastering it and it could be patience it could be um a humble pr presentation and acceptance um a going with the flow there's something of a master in that within you and a change of pace that's coming okay that is going to feel like the sand isn't blowing in the eyes Okay, all I can do is wait right now. Everything feels like it's circulating. It's good because it's circulating all this positive energy back into yourself. It's circulating it around and back into yourself. It's a very bright feeling, very soothing, very relaxing. I'm waiting in a place of eternity, so it's not like I'm waiting at all because time doesn't exist, so there's no such thing as waiting in a place of timelessness. It feels just like that. It feels like having been sitting in a yoga, like a master, <laughs> um, Buddha style position, okay, like uh, you're sitting straight and your legs are crossed and but you've been sitting in this meditation position for, I don't know, a thousand lifetimes, some aspect of your soul has in some dimension than just sitting in this state in pure balance and oneness with literally everything. And it shares that flow of energy with all the yous and through all these lives and they're receiving that source of the, their own self, which is you're receiving that source of your own self. But that source of yourself is moving, is awakening and is choosing to stand now and not being in that meditative position. And we're talking like a thousand lifetimes in a close dimension, but not incarnate as a human, but sending um, the energies from that meditation into all the incarnations. So you have a source of peaceful energy that you always have access to no matter what's going on in any of these incarnations. You did that for yourself. That is so cool. So you have an aspect of your soul that has been in a state of meditation to bring peace to all of its aspects that are in incarnate lives as a human for like a thousand lives. It's now finally standing. Do you see what a big deal this is? It means that you don't need that source of peace anymore because it's like you mastered something in the incarnate state, so you carry the peace with you everywhere you go. Which sets that part of yourself free. 
wasn't it always free? Yes, it was. It was free to choose to do that. It's free to choose to do something else now. But it feels like movement inside your own soul path. All right, there's the the human question. So what am I what do I do with this in the human world? I mean, what does this mean to you in the human world? First off, it's a major energetic restructure. And energy restructures do have an effect on the physical balance of a life. So as there's shifts going on in different dimensions of your soul's expression, huge um, ripples of change take place in your physical expressions. We're all interconnected. It's one big pond with lots of ripples going on all over the place. It means change. But it feels like some part of your human self really wants some direction on... It's all, it's like you're special. You, you're feeling and experiencing the specialness of you. And you want to share the specialness of you as a gift to all the other souls, which is what we want too. We want to receive the specialness of you as well because we love you. And we want to learn from you. And we want to grow too. And you inspire us. And we hope that we inspire you as well. And that's how it is with the all souls. And you're wanting to create a ripple across the collective um, that you inspire. You inspire a ripple. And you want to know um, how to work with you, the master at the, at the surface. What is your talent? What can I do to reach people? What is the ripple that I can create? And I say, oh, oh, oh. Because we were looking for like a frequency that you didn't know what it was. So how are you ever going to get out of the place with the dirt in your eyes? And it's fine because I kind of like that place anyway. I got used to it. Now we're talking about how do I create a ripple? You see what the next thing in your life is? It's an idea that will be something you will work on for the rest of your life. And it's special. Okay, it's really cool. So I am. I'm supposed to, I guess, we'll brainstorm. <laughs> we'll put two heads together. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny. <laughs> okay. You're so uh, such a good listener. You're nodding and saying, okay, I'm up to speed. And you're seeing and experiencing yourself outside of the boundary of that space. We have ascended. You've ascended about, above and beyond it, which means you're infinitely connected again. You're not just working through that experience to mold and shape or enhance this special part of yourself so that yogi guy can finally stand up and move on. <laughs> <laughs> and you can create the ripple in the collective, right? All right, you're more infinitely connected. Like, you are more infinitely connected now. So what What do you do? What do you do with all this? What do you do next? How do you inspire this ripple? What is the advice? And, I mean, you're talking about, what's my higher self have to say? What do my guides have to say? What do my angels have to say? I, want, I would love to get some ideas. All right, Creativity. I think it's great. <sighs> now I see why I, there's a reason why, like, um, you know how I was telling you how interesting this is for me? Because um, my energy, I have this like, um, my energy is perfect for helping you <laughs> with this question because I'm so insanely like 
what I'm bringing to the table is going to create the ripple inside yourself that you need in order to access what you're wanting to actually do with yourself. You just need the spark. And so I'm the spark, okay? <laughs> I'm the spark. It's cool. So basically, I'm kind of, I'm sending you a lot of information, which is just simply a lot of ideas. And it's just all sounds, threads. Like I can tell there's like um, lots of, of frequencies and frequencies are like, like a thread of information that's a very specific song. And there's thousands and thousands and thousands of threads that I'm just like sending to you of ideas and they're colorful, they're places, they're times, there's um, memories of my own in there, there's um, all different things, connections to places in the universe that your soul hasn't incarnated in yet, like uh, there's so many ideas that I'm just sending you because there's things my soul has experienced that yours hasn't and vice versa, right? So you're wanting to access something you you are not familiar with yet and I can be that doorway to give you access to things because I've had experiences in my soul timeline, okay? So that's basically what's going on here as I'm talking to you. And it's just through lots of threads of energy that are just flowing out of my soul. I just instinctively am doing this because I, I just seem to know that I'm supposed to do this right now. And you're kind of bathing in it because it's very exciting and it's new and it's creative, it's fast paced, it's bright, it's colorful. And after being in that sand place for so long, it's really a refreshing change of pace. It feels like getting a really great shower. <sighs> you know the type of shower I'm talking about, it's like, um, wanting to shower, you know, and then finally getting to shower and like, yes, this is awesome. <laughs> it's like that. It's like a really great shower. It's like a glass of water when you desperately need one. <laughs> it's like that. It's like a friend that calls you up when you felt really lonely and it was out of the blue and it was like, oh my gosh, it's like you knew that I needed a phone call. It's kind of like that perfect feeling. And that's what you got going on right now. You have this very um, patient way of processing a lot of information and I'm amazed at how you're smoothing out. And it's almost like I have these like ribbons that are going really, really fast at you and you're just absorbing them and then smoothing them all out. And I'm kind of in awe of this. <laughs> it's making like some extraordinary tapestry it's, it's of energy. It's like energetic information in one extraordinary like tapestry. And you're receiving all this information in your own pace, your own vibrational style and everything. But it's very wonderful for you and for me too. It's all about sharing and receiving. It's really wonderful. And I'm also just like so excited to see what you do with all this information and just watching you smooth it all out is like, wow, <laughs> it's so cool. Cause we all, it's, it's just like, what is so awesome about everybody? You know, <laughs> everybody does it differently. Wow. That's what you're going to do with my information. Well, I didn't even know you were going to do that. <laughs> and then you did it. That's so cool. It's exciting. So let's see what you do next. You are doing something like taking forever and it's not, it's literally you are taking th strands from this extraordinary tapestry and you are creating forever, all right, with certain strands and you are pu putting parts of your soul into those strands um, and living out full on cycles, like, like I'm talking infinite cycles of lifetimes. 
And we could just say six, there's like six very specific threads um, from this massive tapestry of information that you smoothed out and you're really appealed by six um, threads of information. And they all turn into golden threads. And then you put parts or aspects of your soul into each one. And each thread becomes like, I don't know how many lifetimes. Like it could just be simply forever. And it's, there's nothing bad. There's nothing scary or overwhelming or sad or anything. It's actually quite wonderful. I mean, you're thrilled about it. Because as these parts of your soul go into each one of these threads, you become brighter, more enlightened, more connected and aware. And you love yourself more. Like, you're receiving more. You're learning more. You're accessing more. You're part of more. Um, it's all about growth and expansion. It's, uh, it's wonderful. And this is what you needed in order to access this, these ideas that you didn't have. So I created the spark. You created this. You worked with that to create this tapestry. We're pulling out threads, right, that work for you. You are putting aspects of yourself into those threads. They're living a full, like, it could be thousands of lifetimes. It could be millions. It could be trillions. I don't know. Like, I can't put a number on this. It's just a lot. They're literally six strands of forever. And then you're downloading and aware of every single lifetime, each part of your soul experience in each one of these timelines. And now you know. Now you know what the thing is that you didn't know that you were looking for. Okay? <laughs> you finally know what it is. See how unique you are? You see how you do things in your own way? It's really awesome. So I'm waiting and you're in meditation right now inside yourself with what you're what you're figuring out or what you're choosing to work with and then you're taking that and bringing it into this lifetime as yourself <laughs> all that just for you <laughs> you're worth it you see <laughs> Yeah, do you see, again, it's echoing back that um, now how does all this stuff in the other dimensions, it's rippling back to this physical life. It's going to be inspiring you to work with something new that you're going to be working on for the rest of your this physical life. Um, and it's going to be great. Like, you're going to be learning a lot about yourself and other people and the world and stuff like that. And it's going to be outside of the box of what was. It's another sign that change is happening. Change is definitely manifesting here for you. New energies. You're accessing brand new stuff. You didn't even know about this stuff. Now you know about it. And you're not even asking the question, um, so what do I do? Like, what's the ripple? Like, what's how do I work with myself in order to create the change that I want to participate in sharing with all the souls in my life? You seem to innately know what that is now. You just know it without there being any kind of language to define it. You just simply know it inside yourself. It's like the receiving of some extraordinary awareness. <laughs> So now you yourself are kind of in a state of meditation, you could say. It's just where you go into pure silence. You're just in pure silence right now and you're giving and receiving without any movement or sound or anything at all. It's like pure meditation and connection with source, you could say. Within yourself and you as source, it's like, like that. So I'm just allowing you to have this silent time. And I'm waiting. I literally can't, I can't interrupt that. So I'm just gonna let you do your thing over there. And then um, I'm gonna take a drink of water. <laughs> and then we're gonna see what the next thing is, okay? Okay.
Okay. So that you, I mean, oh my gosh, have we ever just, how do I even explain what your energy field is like right now? It's, it's all coming together. It's like all these things we didn't even know are now all coming together and it's simply a feeling. It's a feeling of it all coming together. That's what is going on in your energy field, okay? Which is pretty awesome. Don't get to experience that every day. <laughs> So I'm going to, I guess I'll just go visit your higher self for angels, guides, see what messages they have for you. Okay, I'm going through an arched doorway and then an arched doorway and then an arched doorway and then an arched doorway. <laughs> and I'm still I'm like going through another arched doorway. Another, I was like, am I kind of stuck in a loop here of arched doorways? <laughs> but they do change colors. He's like, there's a green one. Oh, there's a white one. And then there's a black one. Oh, there's just like another arch doorway. Another arch doorway. It's like, oh, does this ever end? So many arch doorways. That's the point. You, I'm not going, it's, that is the point. It's like we perceive life as here's the beginning before the arch doorway. Then there's this juicy moment. Oh my God, now I'm in the arch doorway. doorway. Now I have completed the process. I have stepped through and now I am done. Beginning, middle, end, right? I'm forever in the arch doorways. And there is no beginning, middle, or end. It's just forever. And your higher self is showing me how it it's absolutely peaceful. It's absolutely astoundingly peaceful to be always in the arch doorways. To be in forever is the most blissful state a soul can experience. And it, it, your higher self is not even, it's like um, the human, it's inconceivable because life is hard here, but if this is ultimate peace and bliss forever in the arch doorways of the incarnate state. And it's like taking your first breath forever. And it just, I can feel the specialness of it. It's like it's not even possible for it to be this blissful, and yet it is. It's Breathtaking. So we're going to sit in the arch doorways of forever. There's no beginning, middle, or end. And it's the most blissful space that you could possibly exist in this experience in forever. I mean, the can concept of prison it's it's like blasphemous to even consider that as a term to define reincarnation it is not a, a prison it's actually the most blissful state a soul could a ever experience is being in the incarnate state experiencing reincarnation is the most blissful state a soul could ever be in I'm telling you, man, your higher self has got some real wisdom to bring to the table. And I don't even feel my language is ju doing it justice. But the feeling of it. I mean, you should ask your higher self to share that feeling with you sometime. <sighs> higher self, I'd really like to feel this bliss that Abby was talking about. You're going to have to be silent for a bit and then just allow it to start to develop, like rise up from deep down inside you, rise up to the surface to feel that at the surface of your human experience because it's there already. It's already there with you. It's just allowing the silence to give you access to hearing it, receiving it. This is very 
it's brightening my heart, which means it's brightening your heart. It's uh, the experience of patience is an understatement. It's peaceful. It's like blissfully patient, but patience only exists in a place where there's time. And so it's t a timeless place. Where you and I were just experiencing this right now. No rush. It's kind of a joke in a way because we're sitting in a place without time. So there, how could we ever be in a rush, right? But to translate that into our human world, it's like we, we've got forever. <laughs> we really do though, seriously. <laughs> No, this is, this is being received by your, your human physic, physicality. This, this more, most present expression of yourself is, is receiving this and is, I guess you could say reacting and it's revealing something. Something of a sensitivity and it makes me feel a bit emotional, like kind of sad in a way. And this feeling of sadness is really special. None of us want to ever feel sad, but there's something that your soul understands about the beauty of the feeling of sadness. And when something is incomplete, it can feel empty, it could feel lacking, and it could create sadness. But that is the awareness of what <sighs> fulfillment, it's like a longing for fulfillment, but you're giving something up. You're letting something go in order to actually receive more fulfillment. And so you're taking something away, which is actually giving you more fulfillment, even if it doesn't feel like it. It's an interesting concept of math. It's like, um, here's a bunch of Skittles. Okay, how many purple ones do we have? All right, we're gonna take two purple ones away. Now, how many purple ones do we have? You know, it's like, well, we had eight, now we have six. No, we have 11. <laughs> and it's like, but how? Well, because it doesn't matter. If you take something away, you're still receiving something, but then you receive more than you ever thought possible. So what is our actual math teaching us? A different type of math could be teaching us a different way of actually existing. How do we work with that type of math? We want things to be black and white. We want things to be true. All right, eight minus two is six, okay? Eight plus two is 10. So, so even if you took two away, um, and you got six, okay, well, let's just say then we have eight, okay, well, could we have 10? Like, how are you getting these numbers? I need some explanation. How are you even getting these numbers? You're just making it up. It's just whatever you want the numbers to be. There's something about the soul knows what the numbers are. And the numbers are teaching us about there is always more. There is always plenty. There is never less than. There's only the idea of losing. 
There's only the idea of emptiness. There's only the idea of being something being taken away. But what's really going on is something is being filled. And then being filled with that much more. Even without the two Skittles there. You needed to hear this message and think about it. Because whenever something feels like it has been taken away, it's actually the greatest blessing. When you have the feeling of less, you are actually receiving more. And me talking to you about it is filling you with an energetic awareness, an attunement, a download to that truth. And it's especially felt within your heart. Everything is silent again. It's in a state of processing and digesting a certain energetic awareness. But it's doing it without sound. But I can tell this is happening because there's this amplified glow taking place. I feel like you're going to be acquiring wisdoms and you're going to be able to translate that. You're going to be able to translate those wisdoms and be able to speak with wisdom yourself in a way that people will understand. Like you could take a, a super equation, like some mathematical equation that only a very, very few on the entire planet could ever even understand that mathematical equation. But you would take that super mathematical equation of, of wisdom and enlightenment that you are downloading from your higher self, for instance, and you could easily just express it in some very simple sentences. Um, and then people would would receive it and then they would also be triggered with an enlightenment inside themselves. It's almost like you're blessing people with even just a couple words. But it also is received by the mind in a way that the mind isn't overthinking it. And it's yet understanding it and it's it feels finalized with it and I, I experience you doing this and it completes people and it's a simple thing if it, it is expressed so simply and it is so completing of people who receive these wisdoms from you and I don't know what the process is of you becoming or transforming into this a potential of yourself you could be anything you want to be but i'm being ex i'm experiencing this about you and you get to think about it however you want but i experienced something of this kind there's an opportunity for you to step into these types of shoes in your life and it something about spending time in the silence you receive then the wisdoms. And somehow it starts to express through you. And it comes out so simply and so easily. And it, it's received by people without overthinking. Them overthinking. And it's almost like um, it has a beginning, middle, and end. 
there's something that feels complete about a very simple message. Your soul is so happy. And it doesn't matter what you do in your life. And if your life has moments where it feels an emptiness, or it feels a sadness, or it feels a longing, um, it feels incomplete, or something of this kind, um, your soul is extremely happy and very proud of the life that you are living today. Very proud of this expression of itself, which is you. And is in this doorway of bliss, getting to be you. It's extremely special. All right, I'm going to just let all of that continue to process over there. <laughs> and then I'm going to see what else we can find out. There's, there's, there's so much wisdom, just you've got access to so much wisdom. I want to see what more we can discover here. All right, let's, um, let's tune into angels, spirit guides, other dimensions, anything else that would be really great for you to receive right now. Um, it's a message about time that feels like human time. It doesn't feel like the truth that it is blissful in these forever states. <laughs> It feels like the human experience of time which drags on. And on and on it feels like forever. <laughs> and this is one thing they want you to think about and even explore as um, a study in this life. A mastering patience with time. When time feels like it's dragging on, embrace it even more. Embrace that feeling even more. There's something very, very extraordinary that that is building inside. You would definitely have a master aspect of your soul when it comes to patience and it amplifies that truth and that identity that you have within yourself. It almost is like you have guru versions of yourself and they kind of speak as in one um, oneness with each other, but it feels like several voices as well. And they're master teachers. They have master level wisdom and they all are coming from inside yourself. To, and they're teaching you how to amplify the true master that you are. And by being you, you are now an epicenter in the collective and your energy just radiates the waves out naturally. And by just being you. It feels very um, surreal, you know, like um, the day-to-day -day human life is I got to go to the grocery store, I got to get gas, I don't really feel like it, plus it's raining outside. So then when you get these like guru masters talking, it's like, well, that's great. <laughs> I still got to get groceries. <laughs> and so there's this like um, 
element of the physical human life, but then the physical human life that also becomes this expression of divine enlightenment. And, and an awareness that there's going to be bad, difficult, I don't even want to call it bad, but the challenging days, right? And then there's going to be the f days of freedom and liberation. Um, but it all flows. It all always flows. And just continue to be aware of the truth that exists within you and the light that shines through you. And take the time to sit in silence in order to receive those downloads. Even if you can't consciously hear or have a clue what's... Is, is there something going on right now? Because I've been sitting in silence for a few minutes. I feel nothing, okay? Just just continue to just sit with it. Um, and then know that there, this is, there's a massive event taking place inside yourself. Just allow it to, to happen. Eventually time will reveal and you yourself will express these divine truths through your day-to-day -day life choices, the way that you impact other people in your life, and maybe even become a powerful speaker. I mean, you could be definitely a powerful speaker. You, you, what they're showing me and expressing about you, you could definitely go on to reach lots and lots and lots and lots of people with a very powerful message, a gift that is your own soul. <laughs> Wow. Thank you so much for this. This has been very special. Thank you for the opportunity to connect with you today. Thank you for sharing with others. I feel like a new person. <laughs> okay. And uh, for those of you watching, if any of you are interested in exploring a psychic session with me, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Have a beautiful day, everybody.